Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chen Chen, and on this channel, we talk about creating photorealistic 3D assets. So for today's video, I want to show you a little bit of my sculpting process of this character that I'm working on. To be fully honest, I thought that uh, what I have so far is okay, it's not great. Um, I just don't sculpt enough to have really amazing results. I feel like digital sculpting is a lot like digital painting, which I've done a lot in the past. You just have to constantly practice. And if I stop doing it for a while, when I come back, it kind of feels like uh, I just don't sculpt as good as before. So if there's one thing you can take away from the video is that if you want to be good at this, you just have to practice a lot. Uh, of course, study anatomy while you do it. And it's not something that you can just stop doing it for six months and come back thinking that you will be as good as before. Um, improving skills like this requires a lot of work, a lot of time. It's very time consuming. So for this video, I just want to show you what I did. I don't feel fully comfortable of giving out advice in terms of like sculpting or anatomy because I'm still learning as well. So to begin, I'm using a base mesh that I already have that already has a pretty good uh, base typology. Some guys think that because I'm starting with a base mesh, I'm sort of cheating. I guess having a kind of like generic base mesh does make things slightly easier, but I still think that facial anatomy is just so different from person to person. I know the reference I'm using here is not the best example. She's still a young pretty girl, so it's sort of still kind of similar to my uh, original base mesh. That is actually one thing I didn't like about this project. I should have chosen someone that looked a lot different and distinct. And to be fully honest with you, the reason why I chose her is because I was able to get my hands on a full set of photo of this person. I know it's extremely important to have a photo from the front, the side, the top, and the bottom. And a lot of times photo, reference photo from the top and the bottom is extremely hard to find. And because I was able to buy an entire photo set of her, I thought I would have the best chance of making something decent. This point actually leads to a good side note that I want to mention. Because I also coaching students on the side, I realized that in general, students just don't realize the importance of references. Sometimes things don't look correct simply because you didn't spend time looking for references. So for anyone who is currently working on the project or about to work on a project for your portfolio, when you're choosing your project, definitely consider how much reference is available for your project and how much reference is available sometimes shows you the possible success rate of your project and if it can achieve the kind of quality you want. I kind of went on a tangent talking about references, but back to talking about using a base mesh to start my project. Another reason I want to start with a base mesh is simply because I have retoppled faces in my life many, many times at this point. So if I cannot do it this time, I would choose not to do it. For the beginning of the sculpting, I was actually working inside of Maya a little bit. I find that the move brush inside of Maya was actually kind of easier to control because it kind of helps me to get the general proportion correct. And after that, I will move it into ZBrush. And uh, for pretty much the first half of the sculpting is all about trying to get the proportion correct and try to get the size of the eyes correct, the size of the nose. Um, it's a lot of general proportion things, so I was pretty much using the move brush the entire time. In the beginning of the sculpting, I try not to look at anything too close up and I make sure that I always zoom out to recheck the proportions. It's extremely important to look at her face from the bottom just to know uh, the position of the mouth relative to the nose and also the depth of uh, the eye sockets. And also it's a great view to check uh, if the width of the chin is correct. Um, that's why when sculpting faces is so important to have a photo reference that's from that direction. A lot of times when you check the faces from the front and the side, it can look uh, pretty good. But when you turn to a direction like this, all of a sudden you're going to see a lot of problems. 
It's also super important to have a profile picture to check the depth of the nose and also the depth of the mouth area. After a little bit of sculpting, I want to make sure that the size of this head is uh, true to real life. So I bring it back to Maya and I'm going to measure it using the front view. If I go to preferences and go to setting, and I'm going to change the measurements to inch. Now every square in the grid is becoming one inch long. And uh, average head height of a full adult male is around nine to 10 inches. And I think female is around uh, seven to eight inches. So that's how I'm going to measure if this head is too large or too small. I think this one is slightly too large. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. After that, I'm going to bring this back into ZBrush and keep sculpting. Another thing I want to make sure that is correct is the size of the eyeball because that's going to affect my sculpting of the eyelids. Um, I think the eyeball in general is around one inch, so mine was a little bit too big. I'm also googling some reference uh, of the position of the eyeball inside of the eye socket uh, to help me place the eyeball. After that, I brought the eyeball geometry into ZBrush and uh, I'm going to use it to help me shape the eye in general. Because she is wearing a costume, I actually need some decent anatomy around the shoulder and around the neck so I can build my costume on top. Right now the shoulder just look really wide and the neck is looking really long and wide as well so I need to make that a little bit better so when I build the costume, um, it wouldn't look like something that doesn't fit with the entire character. The rest of the video is a lot of general sculpting. I'm just going to show you um, the process as a time lapse. I don't really have too much comment for the rest of it, so I hope you find something helpful in this video. And uh, if you liked it, click the like button. And also, if you're new to this channel, uh, please consider subscribing. I hope you enjoy the rest of it, and I will see you in the next one.